don't buy the solids buy stay the, in a septic tank. Right. They stay in a septic tank as, as a digester. That's why we need to protect those bugs. Well, those those bugs there are are um, deficient in oxygen. So when we come over to the treatment system, we're introducing the oxygen in the surface area for those bugs. So um, it's a anaerobic anaerobic to aerobic condition that you do that, that does the process. Okay. So it's, and and then so when the water comes out, you said. Uh, Currently, where where you are in the in the in the project that you're looking at now, you need how much depth? Um, well, with the LPP system on this job, it's probably going to be a bed system. But you know, um, to 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 your seasonable water table, you know, I'm good at 18 inches. If I use drip irrigation rather than LPP, then I can make it 13 inches instead of 18 okay. for my separation from. Surface to season. Do, do you know how much fill is going to be put on on this on this lot? They're they're currently finishing up the soils work right now. I don't have that information, sir. Yeah. But well, we have to do a rough measurements around twenty fifteen to eighteen thousand yeah. square feet. Yeah. In six yeah. fields. Yeah. yeah. What what I'm that's not what I'm, well, I, maybe I'm not asking this question right. <laughs> what I'm asking I'm is when they clear that cut the tree, clear clear the land, come back in with fill. That field's going to have a certain depth, and what I'm trying to get to is—is is it may not have any. We don't know any. Okay. Yeah, because the soil, the soil study that they're doing, doing right now, the hydraulic <coughs> study, is going to tell us where that seasonable water table is. Gotcha. If I'm more than 18 inches above that seasonable water you table, do. I don't need it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, that's what I need. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you, Commissioner House. I'm good, Commissioner Ross. I heard public comment that uh, there was a, a serious threat that this development would destroy the aquifer under uh, Roanoke Island. Can you testify under oath that you do not have concerns that the aquifer will be destroyed? I can testify under oath that my equipment's not going to destroy your, your aquifer. Okay, um, thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Siphon. Is Do you have anything else, Mr. Smith? I will ask... Uh, well, I know that, but uh, we're, I'm giving the um, the opposition time now. If there's a representative in the audience, attorney representing the homeowners of wine cheese, if they have any questions uh, of uh, Mr. Siphon. You attorney? Uh, come on. Uh, come on up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need you on record, ma'am, if you'll come. You have to be sworn in, right? And you have to have standing. What? What are? What are you? I'm I'm, I'm lodging my objection. You have a problem with that, Mr. Smith? Yes, sir. Because she okay. She has to have. Standing. That's right. She has to have standing, and unfortunately, she doesn't. Um, I will. Um, Ask, ask you, thank you. Pardon? Well, well, she said she was a property owner. That's got to be adjacent. I don't know. Right. This project. Right. Well, I only had a question as to what's going to happen if the tower goes out. Yes, ma'am. But, but I'm sorry, but yeah. the, the law is this has to be right. a different way. If you have standing, you can ask questions. Right. Thank you, sir. sir Mr. Smith, you. will you bring your next witness, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Lewis. Who are we talking to? It will find out once he gets sworn in. <clears throat> State your name and you, who you with. My name is Joseph Lee Lewis. And your profession, Mr. Lewis? I'm a um, licensed engineer in North Carolina. I specialize in trapping transportation. Okay, thank you. May I begin, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, Mr. Smith. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lewis, would you tell us a little bit about your educational background? I graduated from NC State in 1993 with a Bachelor of Science um, in Civil Engineering, uh, specializing in transportation. 
and hire, and you are a licensed professional engineer? I am licensed in North Carolina and Virginia. And how are you presently employed? I'm employed with VHB Engineering as a senior project manager, again, specializing in trapping transportation planning. Okay, and what does VHB Engineering, NCPC, do basically? All kinds of engineering. Um, tra transportation, trapping engineering, just one of them. We do structures, roadway design, environmental studies, um, airports, um, specializing in bicycle and pedestrian planning as well. And does it do road traffic studies, road impact, uh, road traffic impact studies? Yes, and in, in the past 10 years, we performed approximately 200 studies similar to this one. Okay. And are you familiar with this project that we've been here to, about tonight? Yes. Uh, how did you become in, familiar with it, and what were you employed to do, if anything? We went under contract in mid-February to perform a traffic impact analysis study for the development. And how did you do that? Well, um, once, we once we got under contract, we mobilized staff immediately to go out and set up video cameras at three intersections along Old Wharf Road to, for the purpose of gathering traffic data. Um, once we got the traffic data in, then we um, got it processed, and we started working on our analysis as well. Um, the original goal was to be here in, I think, in March, and but we got postponed to today. Was this study required with North Carolina Department of Transportation? It, it was not, but we have we did perform it to their standards, and we submitted to them for any kind of feedback. We haven't got, received any written feedback yet. Okay. <clears throat> when you did this, did you use any type of – when you used the cameras, what was the purpose of the cameras? Well, in the old, olden days, we would have people sit out in chairs by the, by the roadside and, and press buttons or even make tick marks on a piece of paper counting cars, but now the new way is actually – put video cameras up and actually video, and then we send the video out for processing, post-processing, get the data that way. It's very reliable. It's a preferred standard right now by NCDOT. And did you, in fact, prepare a written report? Yes, we did. And I'm going to show you what I have marked as plaintiff's eight or petitioner's 18, That's which it. I'm going to hand to Mr. Alton. And if the commissioners would like a couple of copies, I have some extras. <clears throat> get the other copies. Uh, yeah, start this way, sir. Yeah. That's what happens when you're down here on the right. No, no, ah, bless your heart. Thank you. And you and I'll share one. Sure. Um, no, what period no of time way. did you do this traffic analysis? Uh, we gathered uh, traffic data Wednesday and Thursday, February 22nd, 23rd, I believe, for to have two days of weekday traffic and also um, the following Saturdays. We did counts to so have a, a weekend count as well. Okay. Why did you pick a Wednesday or Thursday during the week? We typically try to capture days um, when schools are in session, so we make sure we capture that um, peak traffic. Um, we only because we only focus on the peak periods in the a.m. and p.m., so we try to get those. And Saturday, we just pick the, the highest peak hour. Uh, again, that's standard practice. I was going to say, does this meet the standard of the North Carolina Department of Transportation? Yes. Yeah. And uh, what is the speed limit on Old Wharf Road? It's 35 miles per hour. Okay. And did you come to certain conclusions after analyzing all the data that's in this 100-page-plus report? Yeah, we concluded that although there is going to be traffic generated by the site, it's not going to be significant levels to create um, exceptional queuing, which is backing up a traffic at the inter existing intersections or delays at the existing intersections. Well, I believe on page 20 of the report, you have your conclusions. Yes. Could you just walk us through those because they're way above my pay grade? Um, basically, all the intersections that we studied are operating at a really high level of service, A and B. Um, which means what does that mean? Which means they have less than 15 seconds of delay uh, on average during the peak hours of, of study. Is that a good thing or a bad that's, thing? That's a good thing. Um, these are unsignalized intersections. Um, and typically, you can even go to mobile service E and F and actually be acceptable for an unsignalized intersection, but we're not even approaching that here. Is it correct that A, for example, would be the best? A is the best. All right. 
did you come up with any recommendations for the site? Well, for the site, um, we, we analyzed just a, a single um, driveway with a single inbound lane and one outbound lane. Um, we did not study any additional improvements at um, off-site intersections, although I understand there's some discussion now about adding a, like a detail lane going into the site. And why didn't you propose that? Uh, we try to be conservative in our analysis. Um, look at the, I guess, the least capacity improvements at the intersections just to see what we have to work with. And so we had very good level of service as well. We didn't recommend adding that additional asphalt to the road. And I'm pointing here to uh, Petitioner 17, which the road appears the same on all of them. So you're saying your recommendation was one lane in, one lane out? Yes, based on the, the traffic volumes. And did you have any other recommendations at all based on your study? No, just uh, make sure we have at least one lane, one lane out. Um, and that was it. For example, were there any concerning traffic density out here? Were there any left turns off of uh, Pew Road that y'all found on any of the three days that you did this turning on to Old Wharf Road? No. And did you determine how much of an increase there will be in traffic volume, assuming that 2024 is built, this project is completed in 2024, over what was out there in 2023? Yeah, I would anticipate during the weekday AM peak hour increase of just over 50 vehicles on the frontage of um, the site. And then weekday PM, about 60. And then the same thing on the Saturday peak. Increase with about 60 vehicles along Old Wharf Road at the site. And you mentioned something called LOS? Level of service. Okay. How are those vehicles going to affect the level of service, if at all? Well, like I said, all the intersections continue to operate a level of service A and B. Um, they're in all scenarios, so pretty insignificant in terms of operations. Did you have any other recommendations other than those that we've just discussed? No. Those are my questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. Lewis, thank you for being here. Um, I want to. This is a lot to digest tonight. Yes, sir. And 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 I'm I'm certainly. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure we're not going to make any decisions tonight because this is critical to a piece of the testimony that uh, right. we've heard here tonight. As a novice of reading this, and I don't want. I I got to I got to look at the. You just presented this to me. Yes, sir. Smith, so I don't have a clue what I'm looking at. And I don't. I've looked and, at it. And Mr. Lewis has stated that they did studies. To tell me in layman's terms how many days you did the study and what time of the day did you do the study and what were the three locations? Uh, three locations are Brinkley, um, Pew, and Mills Landing. All right, let me let me write that. Brinkley, Pew, and what? Mills Landing. Mill Landing, sorry. All right. How many times did you do it at Brinkley and Pew and Mills Landing? We counted um, all three intersections um, two days, a Wednesday and a Thursday, with the hope of being able to get, you know, one good day of um, traffic data because of weather and other instances. And we understand that on the Wednesday, there was a crash that we just did not even use Wednesday's data. We used, just used Thursday's data. And then we did count Saturday, immediately after Wednesday and Thursday, we discovered an equipment issue. So we went back the following week. So we made two trips down to count on the Saturday. So two trips on Saturday. Yeah, but we only used the one good data, one good data set. And we recounted all three intersections on that Saturday to make sure we had good <clears throat> consistent data at all three intersections. Okay. Um, and and what were the dates that you did that? I think it was February 22nd and 23rd and March 5th, the following Saturday. In all due respect. The 4th, I'm sorry. Fourth. Yeah. Would you not find that February and March, which I know we've just asked this to be done. Sir. This is a hypothetical question, I guess, but I would seem to think 
that we would have a lot different findings come May, June, July, August, Sept September, and the summer months. You might. Yeah, I can admit that. You might. Um, but the timing of the need for the study you know, now. So. Well, we weren't, no, we weren't under any, we, we weren't under, any, we said this would, this board said, let's do a traffic study. We weren't under any timeline to get it done. I mean, okay. we, we could have, we could have done this another 30, 60, whatever days. What uh, We couldn't. Why couldn't we? Uh, uh, pardon? The hearing was scheduled for tonight. Well, well, I know, but we could have we could have had the hearing in May. Yes, sir. Or June, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. But, but my, my, my point I'm making is, um, <laughs> I got I got to shoot holes in this because you did samples of um, four days. And, and what was the time times the samples they were taking from we counted um, the morning peak period, which was six to nine, six to nine. And then the evening peak, which was four to six. I think. Yeah, four to six. Four to six. And that's pretty typical where we capture the, the peak period. So we did a traffic study four days, six to nine and four to six. And um, and once again, I got to look at this because I don't know what the numbers are. I, I, you, you, I'm going to have to go through this and find out what the total numbers are. But um, uh, you got that. You did this by video camera. What – why would – your conclusion is based on the numbers, and maybe you can help me out. Tell me what the maximum number was in the peak hours. Uh, rather than me have to guess and look at this through this report right now. On the figures real quick for you. Figure four. I'm sorry, figure four. What page is that on? Uh? It'd be page eight. It's got the existing weekday and Saturday peak hour volumes displayed. I, I can't find it. Just give me the number. Uh, so um, passing in front of the site during the weekday AM peak is about 180 vehicles total. And that, that's 6 to 9 AM? Well, that's just the peak hour. So okay. we need we, we that down to the peak hour. So is that peak for... Uh, for Bowling or Pew or Mills Land? That's the, the peak volume in front of the site, just right oh, there in front of okay. the site along Midwater. Okay. Yeah. All right. So roughly 180 vehicles. Yes. At peak. Yes. Is that average for the four time four times you did it? Oh, uh, that was the absolute peak. Okay. Yeah. For the Thursday count. Did you say 180 or 108? Yes. 180. 180. Well, 94. In one direction, 85 in the other direction. So it's it, based on these calculations and your findings, you may have heard me earlier ask uh, uh, Mr. House uh, if, if they would entertain a turn lane. Uh, but based on your calculations, you don't think that's necessary? Well, the, the volumes I just quoted to you are the existing counts. If you want to talk about the build volumes, um, we're talking about, you know, right turn in in the morning would be 12 vehicles approximately. In the afternoon, weekday peak would be about 38 vehicles turning in. And then on Saturday peak, about 33 vehicles turning right in. Okay. So that's actually a, a really light volume for that movement. But I understand, you know, that is pretty typical. You put in a decel and right turn lane in that situation. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Lewis. And I appreciate your patience. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I say, I just got this. I so, understand. So I have to apologize for not being able to understand this, but I, I got to look at this a heck yeah. of a lot more. Well, um, only about a third of its report. The other two thirds, all the backup data, if you want to look at that. Gotcha. It's pretty okay. simple. Uh, Chairman, one 
questions along the lines you're just talking. No, you can't. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're saying that if I heard you said that uh, this was however you rated this at, at best, the lowest rating, therefore you had very few recommendations. Right now, I don't remember the acronym that you use. LOS. 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 LOS service. Yes. All right. So how much more traffic would you need to generate the next level worse? Well, for an unsignalized intersection, like I said, your your threshold for, I guess, acceptability is pretty high because a lot of the stuff is really only driven by the side street traffic because the main street, oh, they don't have any delay. So if we doubled that traffic, what would that do to your recommendation? We'd have to run that analysis and take a look at that and see. It, it might change a little bit, but... Um, in, in what way? Well, then you're talking about the burden is really on the traffic coming, exiting the site, really. Um, because we assign all the traffic going coming from the site to the north. We didn't assign any traffic going out, turning right, going south. So again, that's taking a very conservative approach. So the burden would really- change anything with your sight lines at the intersection to the north or to the south? The sight lines? Yeah. And we didn't really focus on the sight lines so, so much. Um, that's gonna be something that's decided through discussions with DOT as part of the, the site driveway permit access. Um, that's still, in flux. We did talk to DOT about that and we know that is a concern, but no, the traffic volumes wouldn't have as much of a factor on the sight lines as you might think. I mean, if you want a sensitivity analysis, we could do something like that to, to know what, you know, what kind of extra volume would raise us to the next level. Did you get your answer? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. I'm going to ask the Commissioner Couch if he has any questions. No, there's been a lot of deep information. I'm, I'm good. The vice chairman's got a question. Ms. Lewis, uh, sir, the, you know, this, this study uh, was done in uh, in February. Yes, sir. And, and uh, early March, let's say. Do you have a, a factor that you <clears throat> would, would plug in uh, for what we would anticipate the traffic on that road being in the summertime when, we have, when we have eight times the, the number of residents in, in Dare County coming every week? And a bunch of those folks uh, go to go to wine cheese for various reasons. Some go to buy seafood. Some just ride around sightseeing. That sort right. of thing. We have a diff totally different dynamic in the summertime, which again goes back to the question of do we need a turn-in lane? I can go back to NCDOT. I ask about a seasonal adjustment factor, and I don't think they said they had that <coughs> at the time. I can double check again. And we got some other data that we can you know rely on. Um, it's called probe data. You know, use of cell phone signals, things like that to manufacture um, traffic data. And it's becoming more and more reliable. We could take a look at something like that because you can go back in time and look at particular dates. So we can, you tell us a date, we could probably extract some kind of data. Um, but, it, but again, that goes back to, I guess, the density of the cell phone signals in the area. If it's not that dense, then you're not really going to get a lot. But yes. we could take a look at something like that if you really wanted to see it. But I understand your point. Yes, sir. Thank you. Commissioner House, I'm good. I'm still trying to digest all this. <laughs> Commissioner Ross, um, thank you, Mr. Lewis. I appreciate it. I will ask if there's a uh, representative in the audience on behalf of the wine cheese residents, uh, if they have any questions of Mr. Lewis. Well, I believe I have enough time to stand before the court. All right. Let's see if you uh, let's see if you meet the um, um, criteria for. Uh, Standing and uh, tell me what, tell me um, um, how, how you figure you, and I, I just need to know if you qualify. I'm training in accident recovery through a training course called Rec Master. It's actually a certification. I'd like to comment on the, the traffic study that was done. I would, I'll would. i defer to my attorney to see if you meet the standing requirement. Do you have an ownership interest in any of the property? Right. I'm reading from the statute, statute. standing requirements okay. are to have standing. You have to have an ownership interest in the property. You have to have an option contract to purchase the property. You have that. Okay. Um, you have to um, be the applicant or you have to be a person who suffers special damages. That's not one of the. Not a part of it. The person who will suffer special damages as a result of the decision 
and that's damages to you as a person distinct from if 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 you're if damage damages that are distinct from you from the public if, is the damage to you different than the public at large then it'd be your call mr chairman to allow that Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So in your study of 180 cars, how many vehicles? I'm sorry. If you, if you would. Yeah. You got to be sworn in. Sir. You got to be. Are you going to testify or are you going to ask questions? You, I'm going to ask a question, but I'm going to testify. You have to be sworn in. You got to be sworn in. in. <clears throat> Go ahead. Okay. And, and, and your objections noted. So, of the 180 vehicles that were recorded, you got, you got to give your name. Say again. Your name. My name is Rex Mann. Of the 180 vehicles that were recorded, how many were tractor trailers? I don't think we really had a big number. Do you recall a number on that? The Federal Motor Carrier Administ Safety Administration says that it takes almost two football fields to stop a loaded tractor trailer. At what speed? At normal operating speeds. What's that? So let's say it's 35, 55 to 65 miles an hour. What if it's 35? Well, how many pounds are on it? Oh, what does it what carry? You, yeah, what does it, well, at 80,000 pounds, 65. So we can figure 30. they need at least a football field to stop, correct? For a 35 mile an hour zone? I would guess. I, I would say that, that it would take one football field to stop a tractor trailer. If you, if you divide it by two, am I wrong? Yep. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move to Jeff. He's obviously not an expert in this area. He's asking me a question. It's divided by two. 720 divided well, by two is 360. Um, so you've never stopped a tractor trailer on this corner before. <coughs> I will, I'm just I'll, asking if you'll have another study done. The, the, I will, the, the objection is sustained. So I've, on, on Mr. Smith's part, since unfortunately not an expert yes, in sir, that area. Thank you. So, but thank you. Um, any other questions of Mr. Lewis? Yes, sir. Mr. Lewis, ultimately, if this project is approved for special use, fact, <coughs> special use, the North Carolina Department of Transportation will make these decisions concerning its roads, won't it? Yes. Thank you. Those are my questions. All right. Uh, let me ask you this, Mr. Smith. How many more witnesses do, uh, do you have? Oh, okay. Um, so, um, you, you, this is, you have any closing comments? You need to ask if there's anyone. Well, that's true. You'll close at the end. Right. All right. right. Well, that's true. Um, you talking about the citizens of Washington? If there's anyone that has standing that wants yeah. to present evidence under mm -hmm. oath, then well, I've, I've asked that up until this point, and nobody said anything. But if anybody feels like that they have standing, um, please present yourself, and and we'll um, see if you do. Anybody, anybody in the audience have standing? If you think you have standing, please present. Present yourself, and if you meet the criteria that the county attorney has addressed, uh, come forward, sir. State your name. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Joseph T. Willis. Okay, and what what do you do? You have you've heard the county manager what requires standing do you I, have that yes sir i did i believe i do but i'll leave it up to the county manager and well, attorney. state state your standing uh, my standing is i am the heir to 365 and 383 old schoolhouse road yeah where's that where is that it is in wanchee north carolina it is uh probably about 300 yards from this proposed site and and as that then how do you are you a person who suffer special damages independent of the public no sir i am not okay. and do you have any ownership interest in the property i am the heir to the property the heir to this property yeah the heir to 365 and 383 old schoolhouse road the property that's under oh no, no sir no. no sir i am not you don't own that and you don't have a contract to purchase that property i do not and you don't represent a, a owner's association on behalf of the community 
Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the community, but are you part of an incorporated or unincorporated association designated by, by virtue of owning or leasing the property in the area or an association otherwise organized to protect it and foster the interests of a or particular neighborhood who also has standing to be here? Uh, I am a person representing the Wanchies Alliance, uh, which I believe is an unincorporated entity. And are they designed to, uh, what's the purpose of the lines? Uh, I would have to uh, defer to the commanders of that. Um, then, then it's not one of the purposes yeah, it's not here. You okay. don't have standing, unfortunately, sir. If, if that's the case, sir, since uh, I, I believe I did have standing at the time, uh, I do see a five-minute clock here. Uh, if it pleases, yeah. I would it's like to. It's not open to the public. This that's is a quasi-public public hearing right now. Hearing. This, is we, this is not a public hearing. This is a quasi-judicial hearing. So. I'm sorry, uh, I can't allow you. To I, speak. I understand, sir. Thank you very much. Is there an opportunity for me to speak otherwise at some other future date for my five minutes? Yes. Yeah. When would that every, be, sir? Every meeting. We have every meeting. Public. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. That would be our May meeting. Mr. Smith, do you have anything else to present? Oh, is there anyone else, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, well, in the audience, yeah. Is anyone else in the audience feel like they have standing? All right, hearing none, Mr. Smith. I'll read it to you with the chairman's permission. Yes, go ahead. An incorporated or unincorporated association to which owners or lessees of property in a designated area <coughs> belong by virtue of their owning or leasing property in that area or an association or organized to protect and foster the interest of a particular neighborhood or local area, so long as at least one of the members of the association would have standing as an individual to challenge the decision. So, so, so if you sure, if if the purpose of that committee was to organize and protect and foster the interests of a neighborhood, then that committee would require. But then he would have to have standing. Oh, hang on, hang on. He would then have to have standing as an individual of that organization to have standing. So he would have to be somebody who met those other criteria as well. And, and that's where it falls apart. This is, this is a trial. This is a trial. To put on evidence, not to get opinion. I, I don't know. The answer is. Stand down, please. I, we'll move forward, County Manager. Okay, okay. County Manager, we're moving forward. You've answered the question. I've asked Mr. Smith if he has any other anything else to present. Not to present. Mr. Chairman, I just have a very brief you, Okay. <clears throat> more, than, more than 50 years ago, the North Carolina Supreme Court, in deciding the issue of special use permits such as the one that we're dealing with here, said that the governmental entity, such as yourself, is restricted to its own ordinance and that it is not the burden of the petitioner, such as area here, to persuade. It is just the burden to present. And we have presented overwhelming evidence as to those things that are in your purview. And we've gone beyond that because you had interest, like the traffic study, for example, you would rightly, I suppose, uh, for your constituents' concerns, ask for one, so we've attempted to provide it. But if you look at your statute, what has to be shown is that it's allowable special use, which it is at VR, according to your manager, that the setbacks are made, that the separations of the dwellings are appropriate, that the lot coverage is appropriate, that the building height is appropriate, the maximum size is appropriate, the parking is appropriate, and the roads can be serviced by emergency or service vehicles. All of that we have shown, and that's what we have to prove. That's our presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, in light of the time of this evening, it's 1030. Mr. Mr. We, Chairman, I would suggest that you close the presentation of the evidence formally, and if you're going to come back. Well, that's where I was going, I'm but sorry. go ahead. No, and then you all then can 
either deliberate now or take time to read all this stuff and deliberate and then come back at another yeah, meeting. That's where I was going with this, uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, like I said, in light of the time, it's 1030. In particular, I've had all my questions answered personally. I'm, I'll yield to my fellow commissioners, but this I just got 30 minutes ago. Yes. I've not had chance to digest it. And that's a key piece in my determination uh, with respect to this hearing. So uh, my suggestion to the board is that we close the hearing and that we will con uh, we will uh, take this up at our May 1st meeting. At, at, uh, and we'll once again, folks, we will not have it at 9 a.m. in the morning. We'll have it at 5 p.m. Uh, that is my suggestion to this board. Um, you and want a I, motion, Mr. Chairman? I do, if you don't mind. I, I move that we digest this information in the next uh, 30 days or whatever and be prepared to uh, arrive at a decision after we've had an opportunity to check everything out here in these various reports and myriad information we've been given on uh, in our first our May meeting. Thank you, Commissioner Second. Couch. Uh, Commissioner Couch has uh, made that motion. Uh, and it's been seconded by Mr. Uh, Commissioner House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. Uh, opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Um, if, if the folks here will hang tight, we, we're going to get out of here. We're not going to stay another minute past 11 o'clock, but we do have consent agenda and we have board appointments. I would like to address some of the public comment at the very end. Um, if, if the board is, uh, if you folks are willing to, to hang tight, because I'd, I'd like to answer some questions, um, if that's okay with the board. But we will shut down at 11 o'clock, if that's okay. So I will move, I will move uh, uh, county manager to item 11. Okay. Mr. Chairman, item 11 is a consent agenda. Um, on the consent agenda, you have the approval of the minutes, you have the tax collector's report, you have the DHHS, social services, adult protection services, essential services, funding budget amendment, you have billing services for the Dare Water Department, you have Zacchaeus Legal Services for tax collection, you have public works, bulk fuel purchases, budget amendments for the Virginia S. Killett Community Center, advertise the 2022 tax liens and the Health and Human Services Public Health Division Trillium Opioid Remediation Program funding. Motion to approve. There's a motion on the floor by Commissioner House to approve the uh, consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Couch. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor say five saying aye. 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 Folks like that. Motion carries unanimous. Uh, next is your board appointments. You have the aging advisory council for the Albemarle Commission. Uh, Brandy Bohannon has retired and Kay West has resigned, leaving no representatives for Dare County. The applications for your consideration are Nancy Beth Moore, Sandy Pace, and Christine Ward. Pleasure of the board. I move that Beth Moore and Sandy Pace be appointed to this board. Motion by Commissioner Ross is a second. Second. Seconded by Vice Chairman and uh, Commissioner House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Next is their County Board of Adjustments. The terms of Edward Mann Jr. and Anna Creep expire this month. They wish to be reappointed. Move to reappoint. Mr. Motion Chairman. on the floor to reappoint by Commissioner Couch. Any second? Second. Second by Commissioner uh, House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Next is the Airport Authority. The authority recommends James R. Kenny be reappointed for a four year term. Move to reappoint. Motion on the floor by the Vice Chairman to reappoint. Seconded by Commissioner House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Next is the Mans Harbor Board. The following members have terms that expire this month. Cindy Holder, Lad Davis, Jonathan Oglesby, and Jesse Troy Outland, Jr. They all wish to be reappointed. Uh, Troy Outland, <clears throat> Sr. resigned in 2022, and there are no applications for that position. Move to reappoint. Motion on the floor by the Vice Chair to reappoint. Any Second. Seconded by uh, Commissioner Couch and House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those likewise? Motion carries unanimous. Uh, next is the Veterans Advisory Council. Robert Prost and Marsha Brown wish to be reappointed for another three-year term. Motion on the floor by the Vice Chairman, seconded by Second. Commissioner House. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those like sign. Motion carries unanimous. In your upcoming board and committee appointments, you, in May, you have the Zoning Board of Adjustment for Dare County with two terms expiring. In June, you have the Hatteras Community Center Board with three terms expiring, the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council with 12 terms expiring, the Land Transfer Tax Appeals Board with three terms expiring, the Library Board for Dare with three terms expiring, the Roanoke Island Community Center Board with three terms <coughs> expiring, the Transportation Advisory Board with one term expiring, and the Waterways Commission with three terms expiring. And then in July, you have the Airport Authority with four terms expiring, the East Lake Community Center Board with one term expiring, the Game and Wildlife Commission with four terms expiring, and the Juan Cheese Community Center Board with five terms expiring. And that would be your agenda, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, County Manager. I appreciate that. Before we go into um, um, uh, Commissioner's business, um, as a courtesy to the folks here in Juan Cheese, they've been very patient sitting here all night long, and and um, they need to, <laughs> like everybody else, they need to get home. I, I wanted, and, and I'll yield to the my fellow commissioners if they have any response to public comment but i would like to i would like to address a couple of things that was addressed to us uh this evening in public comment and um and um um gosh i don't know where to start but um i just want to validate something and verify that um this this project uh, is not uh, an essential housing, and I don't like the word affordable. And I, I, I changed that four or five years ago when we started uh, talking about uh, housing, essential housing for our, for our workforce and folks. This 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 is not a project that um, the county uh, has uh, pushed with. Uh, Woda Cooper, who is trying to do some um, uh, housing for us that is um, subsidized, as well as it's not 8A housing, by the way, as and as well as uh, Coastal, who we've hired to hopefully uh, do a project for us for the monies that we receive from the uh, state, some $35 million dollars. And, and the NIMBYs has shot us, shot us down considerably on everywhere we've gone. This is a separate project that's been market rate housing from day one, from what I understand from Mr. Anderson. So I, I wanted to make that clear. Um, um, Commissioner Ross made a statement in the, in the, um, uh, questioning of, of the quasi-judicial hearing that um, would we have um, uh, a smell of a sewage plant around and that's been certainly answered for those that had that concern tonight um, the um, uh, pay your employees was another one that was mentioned to us I mean come on four years ago we spent four and a half million dollars. This board spent four and a half million dollars for our employees. Last year, we spent another four million dollars to meet the market rate for our employees in Dare County. I, I take total of offense to that, uh, making that accusation that this board needs to pay their people. Uh, it makes me sick to my stomach when I hear something say, say that because nobody works any harder than this board on projects to do things for this community. Uh, you know, pay our teachers more. What is it, uh, county manager, 38% of our budget? Yes, $25 million yeah. a year. $25 million a year of a 50-some million dollar budget for the schools plus we play pay an additional three million dollars for uh, school resource offices and we've lobbied i've been to raleigh last week three three days the week before i went three days the week before that i went three days with uh com vice chairman and the county manager lobbying our legislators 
to increase teacher pay. Well, guess what? They're going to give them 10% increase. It ain't nowhere near what it needs to be. But don't tell me we don't do our job and we don't care about the people in there. I, you know, uh, you have a right to say whatever you want. But there's not a board in 100 counties in the state of North Carolina that has done what these gentlemen sitting beside me have done over the years. And trust me, folks, I can throw a lot out there of the stuff that we've done. Who would have thought we'd have had three bridges in the last four or five years? Who would have thought we got $15 million going back and forth to the state legislator, letter, legislators to do a public-private partnership to build a dredge so that a lot of you folks can get in and out of the inlet to go to work, to go to work. Well, I know you don't want to hear it, but you're gonna hear it. So, so don't, so don't tell me, so don't tell me that we don't do our job and we don't work hard. So that's my response to some of the public comment. I'll turn it over now to uh, Commissioner Couch if he's got any comments. The only thing that, uh, again, my chief concern here is uh, that that stays essential housing because I've seen. What the air, if those things get Airbnb'd or verboed, then there will be confrontations. And I don't want that for the people. And I don't, I don't want that for our friends and family in I don't want that anywhere on the Outer Banks. I don't know what kind of. I'm, I hate to interrupt. You all, if you're, if you're not going to deliberate on this, you shouldn't okay. have conversations about it until you have your deliberation. All right. Um, I'm good. Thank you. Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on uh, March 14th, the, the Community Foundation had their yearly meeting. It was extremely well attended. And um, a, a lot of, as Community Foundation does a lot of really good, really good things, um, they will continue to do that in service of, of Dare County. Um, Dave Clawson sits on the on the board and of, of the Community Foundation, and, and he was there. Dave, thank you. Um, Dare County wouldn't be the same place without Community Foundation. I thank you for the work you do. Uh, on March 28th, Roxana Ballinger and I attended the Veterans Advisory Council and presented to them the, the Fentanyl Kills campaign uh, that has uh, recently been initiated. We left literature there and the locks on kits and so forth for the um, advisory board to distribute as needed among the veterans in Dare County. On March 30th, the Saving Lives Task Force held the third annual Face Summit at St. Andrews by the Sea. It was the best attended meeting that we've had uh, to bring the, the faith community into our fight against uh, substance use uh, and to help with mental health issues. Um, Commissioner Bateman was there. He's, he had to step away, as, as you heard, but Commissioner Bateman was there for that meeting and, uh, again, very well attended. As always, I'd like to say congratulations to our service pen recipients for their uh, 50 years of service and to Crystal, our employee <coughs> of the month. And that's all I have, sir. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Commissioner House. Yeah, I'll make this quick. Um, the State Division of Marine Fisheries will be holding a public hearing on five proposed shellfish leases here in Dare County and those uh that public hearing will be here in this room on Wednesday April 12th at 6 p.m and the public may attend the meeting in person or online via WebEx uh, the public may also comment on the proposed shellfish leases in writing and write, written comments will be accepted until April 13th via online by or by mailing in comments to the Moorhead City office the leases that are being considered, there's two leases for Kennekeet Oyster Company off Avon Harbor. There's two leases for uh, Kings Point Oysters off San in Sandy Bay, and also shell Shellfish Bottom Lease in uh, Belosey Creek. <clears throat> um, some good news, Odyssey of the Mind, which is a teaches students how to develop and use their natural creativity to become problem solvers. 
Imagine being faced with a problem that requires an original solution. It can be frightening. Now imagine not being able to be not being afraid to solve that problem. That is what Odyssey of the Mind members learned. These skills and self-confidence will carry over in all areas of their lives. OM brings a classroom life that students apply for what they learn and combine their interests and passions to solve our unique open-ended problems. Now, there are uh, several teams that have competed from the Dare County School System. Um, three of them actually went to uh, the regionals. Uh, I'll take it back. Four went to regionals. Uh, three of them went to state. One of them has now won the opportunity to go to the world finals, which is in Michigan. It's from the first flight middle school. Now to take that up, um, they've got to fly, hotel rooms, eat, and uh, not only with uh, you know the teacher, but also with their uh, uh, coaches and, and, and sponsors and chaperones. So it's looking like about a $25,000 trip for them. And normally what, uh, what happens is like last year, uh, Kedok elementary was, was able to, to win it. Um, and they did a lot of public fundraising. I would like for this board to step up and, uh, if we could, uh, come up with about, uh, I'll, I'll say 10,000 to go towards that 25,000 to get our students to, to the worlds. I'll make that as a motion. Is there a second for discussion? Would you describe that again? I'm serious. Describe that again. Okay, the Odyssey of the Minds. Yep. All right, we've got one team from First Flight Middle School. And and what what is it for? It's it it's it's uh is it like science based stuff or where? Uh it's problem solving. And they have had to put put a program together where there's a problem, and then they've had to work that problem out. And these judges have judged on what they've done. And they've done the same proposal in reg uh, regionals, states, and now off to worlds. Off to the worlds. Off to the worlds. Were they now going the to Brussels or something? No, nope. <laughs> no, it's it's in Michigan. <laughs> it's, it's at Michigan State University. And what I mean by worlds is not only are they competing against teams from other states across the United States, but also from other countries. Is this the first time any Dare County school team has ever been represented? No, no. It was last year. How did they pay for Kick it? Off. Private donations through um, um, the communities at large, through businesses, and also through the school board. Okay. Also kicked in some. Okay. So this year that's changed. I have approached the school board and they said they don't think they've got the funds this year. Out of the $70 million budget. I, I'm not challenging you, Steve. I'm just I'm wondering just you what, how they what couldn't manage to find this and why it's now being thrown here tonight just, at 11 o'clock. We'll table it. Or actually, we won't table it because by the time our next meeting is, they'll be gone or they won't go. Is, is there, you said it was the, their cost was $25,000. Mm -hmm. So would we want to pay what they don't raise not to exceed $10,000? Fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Can you make the motion to that effect? Motion. Sure. Is there uh, a second? second? The vice chairman second. Any let's any dis further discussion? All right, hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Commissioner Ross. No comment today. Thank you, sir. Uh, County manager, you have anything else this evening? Real fast. Um, two things. Uh, on our Water Cooper project, uh, Water Cooper is working with Manio on sewage disposal, they've asked us to write a letter on their behalf to the Manio to authorize uh, a voluntary annexation if they grant the sewage permit. I told them I couldn't write that letter without your approval, but but if you all approve, we would send the letter in to Manio so they could move that project forward. Move to approve. Move. It's a motion on the floor by the vice chairman to approve, seconded by Commissioner Couch. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like saying? Motion carries you know. The last thing is, um, Dave and I have been working on the budget. In the budget, we talked about we're working on the, the salary study and the implementation of, of that salary study. Uh, when we approved all that earlier, we approved it across all of our funds. When you start moving the monies around and putting the monies in the right funds, the general fund comes up short. 
we got the money to cover it, but wanted your authority to cover whatever the implementation of the salary study is going forward, and then we'll cover it again in the budget process when we get ready to do it. It's probably close to what, 500,000 day? They already authorized that number for you. Um, we found one department where we need more so far. So, so it won't be much. So, so we just need to, to move forward and do that implementation. Do you need a motion to do so? Yes. Pleasure. I'll, I'll make that motion. Uh, I trust our finance department. Is there so a second? Is there a second? About a second about a vice chair. The floor is open for discussion. So we're just moving funds from one fund to the other fund? I'm trying to understand what you just said, Bobby. I'm not opposing. I'm the just answer is I don't know. The answer is I don't know. at the time we put the numbers out with you when we approved the yep, implementation, I remember. we had multiple funds. And as we go now and are putting the monies in the, if I've got this right, Dave, correct me, in the right accounts, we found that we're short in one of the funds that wasn't included in that process right that right and so we're trying to make sure we've got permission to cover that gap in this one and then we deal with the whole thing in the budget as we go forward it'll be covered in the next year budget okay pleasure of the board those in favor of the motion signify aye. by saying aye. Aye. aye aye opposed like sign motion carries That's unanimous. All right. thank you county manager uh, Public information off of Ms. Hester. Do you have anything this evening? No, sir. Um, Finance Director, Mr. Clausen, you have anything else? Yes, sir. Okay, we need a motion to adjourn until May 1. So moved. And, and no. let's, so, let's right. schedule that at 5 o'clock. Nice. We're going to recess the quasi yes, correct. Hearing until May 1, and we're going to adjourn the meeting. Yes, adjourn the meeting, and then we're going to do that at 5 p.m. <clears throat> Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those aye. like sign. Motion carries unanimous.